how we tie it. And okay, this is old cow. And this is not a spring chicken. Today we're going to be talking about the Emmy screening series by The Wrap. And this one's called? Uh, Cinema Sin Verite. Mm -hmm. Which is basically the more real film is what they call it. So it's, it deals with the destruction. It actually, I was doing broadcasting stuff at the time. They said it deals with the true destruction of the broadcast television industry. Or as some people may think of it as the beginning of reality TV. Yeah, which basically brought about the death of broadcast television. So, um, but um, we're talking, you know, that, uh, you know, I, I, technically, I'll tell you, technically the movie has got awful, the editing is brilliant. It really is. I mean, you're seeing the editing, like we had, a, we, had, a, we, had a, we were in the audience, the place was packed full of people. Because it was an Emmy screening. Yeah, and there was a lot of screenings going on in that, that uh, a couple of nights ago. I mean, we're talking the whole. There were three. In the funny, same floor that we were at, and basically there was a lot of people I recognized from the from the acting business over in the Screen Actors Guild line. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, the, the the cutting, the cinematography was done such that it basically they could seamlessly intercut between archival footage of the uh, of the louds mm -hmm. and. And the uh, the new people, you know, which were Diane Lane playing Pat Loud, Tim Robinson, Bill Loud, Thomas Decker, Lance Loud, and James Galafini playing the jerk that basically destroyed destroyed the broadcast business. You know what's really interesting is they didn't even put his name. On. Uh -huh. We're looking at IMDb. Yep. They usually put the you know the actor actress. No, it's the just blank. Name. I mean, this they guy, left it blank. Well, it destroyed his career. The guy, is, uh, what we can figure out, never did a single thing. We're talking, he couldn't have been that old. This was uh, 40 years ago. He could not have been that old. And yet, uh, he, he never did anything else, you know, afterwards. Whereas the two people who worked with him actually in the thing got Academy Awards. They're actually responsible for this. You know, I'm, so, I'm, I'm making, you know, so they're, they're not there, but I know they are there because they're the only people that came off looking good in the whole production. Well, actually, when you look at it, because we're, they're, um, yeah. These are oh, the co-directors. Yeah. Sherry Springer Berman and Robert. And Robert Koshini. Yeah. yeah. But it's actually we're talking about the people that actually did the filming were really the forces behind this because the Oscar winners, folks. Mm -hmm. and they wanted to do something about um, that, like they've basically been on uh, on uh, like the Louds did after the thing was put on. They're on the, we weren't responsible for all of this happening to folks to her, so. But this, oh, that's this, true. It is uh, really a good deal. Uh, you know, uh, uh, like I said, there's all four, four actors, Diane Lane, Tim Robbins, Thomas Decker, and James Gannafini. That is all that counts in this entire thing. You don't have, you have, nobody else has anything. The, the other people are. They're furniture. Yeah, furniture. The total Accessories. furniture. And they have some big names in there that basically, you know, that nobody's paying any attention to. Mm -hmm. Because they're basically chewing up the scenery. Well, Diane Lane, I mean, she, you know, she did a fabulous job. And this really was, if you want to call it Pat Loud's moment. Well, yeah, because, I mean, um, people really thought of Pat Loud as an, uh, you know, basically, she did, uh, what happened was she basically wanted to get even with her husband, who was a philanderer. Oh, is that And what so she arranged for this to be done because she knew he had this big ego and he basically knew, and he, like he agreed because his business was suffering badly because of strikes and other things. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he figured it would be a good way to prop up his business, which if you pay any attention, it really didn't work. It did help. By the end of, the, by the end of what they had done filming, his, his career, I mean, they, they were selling stuff right and left, mm -hmm. you know, so, but... Um, you know. And the kids started getting busier in what they were doing. Oh. I mean, if you look back on their, their, I mean, at what they were doing, this is a behind the scenes look at the making of the first American family to be yeah. the subject of a reality TV show. Yeah. And this was, actually, this was groundbreaking at the time. Groundbreaking. This was 40 years ago this was mm -hmm. done. And um, basically, it was totally unheard of. I mean, I can tell you, it's just as I worked, I was working back then. They called it the destruction of an American family. Well, see, here's the unique part is since this is about what happened in history and you were alive during that time, yeah, actually, you actually experienced what was going on versus like me. She wasn't. It's just, like, was, it's okay, just like, like watching a television. It's show. like Diane. I wasn't born then. 
you know. And then the other woman was in. I wasn't born then either. I'm, like, I'm not born then. The only one that was alive then was Gannafini and Robbins. Mm -hmm. But they both look at it different because um, Gannaf, uh, you know, uh, you know, Robbins is basically could have been playing himself, which is funny. We've seen well, we've, we've seen Tim Robbins. Tim Robbins can basically get he can be the most charming individual on the face of this planet, mm -hmm. and then be the biggest sob at the same time you've ever seen. Well, if, for example, in this movie. Well, talk about what we saw in the movie, and then you talk about what you remember yeah. from watching it before. Oh, actually, you know, here's the part that I found that was really interesting is, um, because of everything that happened around this movie, the original series, um, they were showing us as it went along um, how many, what day it was, and how many rolls of film they'd gone Yeah, through. I mean, they, they overshot everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and another unique thing is that basically because of litigation, it's just like it only comes out every 10 years, and this is that 10-year period. Uh-huh. So, but uh, it was, uh, because I mean, the, uh, they got, okay, um, like we we'll talk about um, Thomas Decker's role, which he'll probably get an Emmy, I would guess he'll get an Emmy for playing Lance Loud. Mm -hmm. Because I looked at the role the same way he did it. I looked at him, okay, Lance was, was, obvious, uh, Lance was mm -hmm. obviously gay, but it, the, the, what, they were, what the, uh, what the uh, filmmakers did in the original, in the documentary thing, was that they made him look like he was just overboard on being gay? You know, the guy he went, he wanted to be in, wanted to be a performer, mm -hmm. and he basically got all wound up about all the people he got to meeting. He was and just the people he meet, like he, he, he wanted to go to New York to make it big, right? Yeah, which so he is, goes to the Chelsea House. Yeah, and right? he, which and he basically because he was gay, he hung around gay <laughs> people who often to basically were you know. You know, get you know, like, and he basically became, he really became a huge person. Yeah. I mean, he was, you know, he was just like they said. You want to see a person who was full of life? You look at. It was just loud. full of life. Now it's like I remember when we were there was a Q and A session that followed afterwards, and I remember Thomas, who actually, Tom, I, I, I've interviewed Thomas a few times for yeah. um, actually was in what the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Yeah. And, right. And, and he was my my little one favorite actor because he did. The, the little foot in the land before time. He was also the youngest kid. He was the the child member on uh, in the television series. Uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kid, so my little one sort of liked him. I know. So I was really excited to see him on there. But one of the things that's interesting is when um, they go to actors and actresses and they talk about a role. It's like um, when you're walk watching James Gallagher you're talking to about it. It's like they're being sold on the role. And you know, he's like, yeah, I kind of saw about it. And he said. You know, when I saw him on, what was it, the Dick Cavett show, yeah. he said, I became obsessed with the character. Yeah. And then as, as you hear more and more, now this wasn't in the show, because right, they're talking about when all of this happened the first time. Lance Lau later worked for oh, Interview Magazine. He became, he, he didn't work for you. He, he, was, a, he yeah. was the big shot. I mean, okay, but to tell you this, that um, uh, Diane Lane had been on the cover I twice, know. and you know, they were all talking about the fact that the uh, when they did the premiere of Cinema Verde, the only member of the of the family that the people that played their offices didn't get to meet was Lance Lau because he died from age ten years ago. Yeah, and uh, and then Diane then and then uh, Thomas Decker was talking about he became you know he really became a wheel with the Interview Magazine. And she said, you know, to, oh, oh my God, I was on the cover twice mm -hmm. of that magazine, mm -hmm. which meant. I mean, I probably, probably met him met. Well, and know, didn't realize it. And part of it, when Thomas was sitting there talking, he was saying that he was talking to different people, and it's like, yeah, everybody knew Lance Loud, and all of a sudden he's like, well, you know, I really everybody, know. everybody that everybody knows Lance Loud because he was such a. Uh, I don't know what you're. Oh, I see what's happening. So um, it's doing an update. No, but the guy. Um, it. I'm. A, I'm making a wild guess because she subjectively knew had met Lance Loud when she did things for Interview Magazine and she basically started playing, because she's a mother, mm -hmm. you know, she's got her teenage child is graduating high school, but she started treating Lance Loud, like she started treating Decker oh. like she would have treated... If she uh, were her, the mother, his mother just because, like, in, like in the movie Cinema Verity. Because she had met, you know, you know, without paying attention, had met Loud Knew him subjectively and like basically, on a subconscious level, and it? she basically was then going to work with somebody, you know, putting what she had already seen 
and basically sort of prodding the Decker character into doing more because the Decker character, she'd already seen the Decker character. Well, and part of it is, is when we're sitting there listening to the Q&A, that's when Diane went through the realization that she had met him before. Yeah, and she hadn't. It never it, even it, dawned it's on like her. like in the subconscious Because level it becomes like a, 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 a real... I was on the mag I was on the cover of that. I've done numerous interviews during that time period that he was there. Well, you know, it's, so. if you watch reality TV and you're watching all these different shows, you're, you know, here, here's part of it is there are some people that think reality TV is real. It's not as scripted. Okay. Yeah. In fact, they do give out Emmys um, for, <laughs> yeah. for reality TV. Yeah. But, this, you know, something like this, this was like the first one. There was no scripts. They shot a lot of film. I know. And then uh, here's the guy, Gilbert, who had basically set everybody up. He had a... He lied through his teeth to everybody because he thought he was going to get something big out of it. And uh, and, be, and what happened he was... He kind of crossed the line. He crossed the line and basically they cross that line all the time nowadays. But the, but he was the first at that point. He was the first to do it. But what he was doing, he picked a family because it was a family that was... Uh, we're talking, we're really, we're, we're not talking upper middle class, we are talking upper class Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. Where they were used to throwing money around like it was water. And they look like the ideal family. And they were anything but the ideal family because... Well, it's always what's behind the facade, you know, everything's like, you know, the, the American family and then there's a crack. Like, yeah. it looks like the perfect family, you know, because everybody always says, oh look, they've got the perfect family. Well, guess what goes on behind the scenes? But he picked a family where, you know, he, one wants to be the singer, a dancer, I mean... Another yeah. band, they wanted to have their own band. The father basically... Oh, I mean, the father was... I, I met the father. The father oh, you did in real life? Yeah, the guy was the nicest person on this planet. He was... Okay, if you're in a movie, you'll, he'll, he'll, if you watch the thing on, on HBO, you'll see him talk about that, uh, telling people about that uh, you can sell if you believe in what you have to sell. And he believed in himself, mm -hmm. that he could sell himself. He sold himself all the time. Even when the family's cracking, it's, it's, it's basically, it's all about, you know, but what happened with Pat Lau spoiled the hell out of all the children. Mm -hmm. all the you can tell she really did. Yeah. Now, here's part of it. Since you actually lived through the times, and, you know, I know you're a fan of Diane Lane, too. How do you think of how she portrayed the character? Because that was a little bit different. Oh. I mean, because I'm watching the character, and, you know, she seems to be a likable person, maybe a dominating mother. She, was, uh, she played the, okay, uh, Pat Lau was a real bitch. I mean, totally and absolutely. I know nobody that liked Pat Lau. Okay. They basically said she was the response. She was response. They liked Bill. They didn't like her because they said, I heard it. Remember, what woman in her right mind would subject her children to what she did? Well, well but she, see, what, that wasn't the first time. I mean, now she I was mean, lied to. Because if you look at oh, okay, I'm going to bring up like the Kardashians, yeah, right? Because because they, they all say that mom. What was mom? Um, what's her? I'm trying to think of her name. Um, Jenner. Uh, Jenner. Uh, anyway, Mama Kardashian for lack of a lot of yeah, <laughs> right. And, you know, Kim Kim Kardashian. Um, and Chloe and you know it's like their mother they say that she's a center point which to me is kind of like um, Pat Lau must have been with her family she was a center point she like kind of okay. knew everything that was going on and helped to like uh, maneuver their lives yeah but this was like the start of the really big women's movement period and basically they were she was the okay father was the bad guy because well, if it was bad, kind of flitting around. But on top of that, though, he was always away from home because he was working. And if you were away from home, go. Do you want to see an example of a of a of a man being belittled every single one, you know every week for, I guess for fifty years? Go look at Fred Flintstone. Because his wife always basically pushed him around. He never did anything right until the end of the show. Oh, really? Yeah, then that's the way it works with the loud. They did, he did nothing right and ended up with the lady. Mm -hmm. So, they were married for like 20 some years, Actually, got that divorced, was, and then back together again. So, that, yeah, that was the interesting part because yeah. it's like a no, maybe, I'm not going to tell. Well, actually, part of this is this is, this is reality history. TV. This, this is, is reality history. TV. This is history. So I, you know, it's that that first scene that they actually it was actually the first scene they shot was them in the pizza place. Yeah, where they're all going to. What happened was was the uh, they none of the people 
in real life were like they were portrayed by the cutting. They didn't realize what a cutter could do. And the cutter <laughs>